Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I recently talked to this person that I remembered from school. He always got what he wanted, even as a kid, and it made me look back and realize that I barely got anything I wanted, even back as a kid. I wonder what I've been doing wrong all these years. Maybe I need to start being more assertive. Walking Small is the episode where Plankton tricks Spongebob into becoming assertive so that Plankton can build his chum bucket mega bucket at Goo Lagoon. Like Texas, this episode aired on March 22, 2000 and is the first episode where Plankton has a major role but doesn't try to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. We don't see that kind of thing happen often, so when it does, it feels nicer because even though he always tries and fails to steal the formula, his other plans that will still fail can be more interesting sometimes just because they're different from his secret formula plans. Sure, Plankton did appear and didn't try to steal the formula in episode 32, Valentine's Day, but that was just a cameo in one scene. This episode has Plankton in a main role without trying to steal the formula. This is also another episode of that Spongebob Plankton dynamic that's always fun to see. However, Plankton showed no other sides to his personality this time, unlike episode 21, FUN, where we saw Plankton show a side of friendship there. Of course here, Plankton does call Spongebob his friend in a line, My friend's got something to say! But of course he is around Spongebob in this scene, so he probably said this just to continue tricking him. So let's watch this episode and see Plankton's first major plan that doesn't involve stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula. So the episode starts up and Plankton arrives at Goo Lagoon to tell the beachgoers to leave so he can build the Chum Bucket Mega Bucket. But because he's so small, nobody could make out what he was saying. Then a little kid saw his bulldozer and thought it was a tractor because it was small too. Man that kid, not knowing the difference between a bulldozer and a tractor. Plankton knew he could no longer deny how small he was and needed somebody to clear the beach for him. Then he saw Spongebob stepping on the beach and decided to use him for his plan. Then Spongebob tries to get ice cream, but others cut in front of him until the ice cream vendor was out. Spongebob then saw Plankton crying and went over to ask why. Plankton stated he was crying because he had two ice cream cones, but he only needed one. Wow, how convenient! Spongebob said he would eat one of those ice cream cones for Plankton. During this, Plankton told Spongebob that he could get whatever he wanted as long as he learned how to be more assertive, and Plankton agreed to teach him. Spongebob was on board, and Plankton was pleased. Very conveniently, a guy sat on Spongebob, and Plankton told Spongebob to tell that guy to get off him. Spongebob asked politely, acted insertively, and then the guy stood up after looking at his watch. Plankton said Spongebob missed his chance, and then they spotted the eel that took Spongebob's ice cream, and Plankton suggested he get it back. No thanks, I'm full. Plankton told Spongebob to get the ice cream back, but of course he failed, so Plankton crawled inside Spongebob's mouth and threatened the eel to give the ice cream back. The eel started crying, but Plankton said they were tears of joy since Spongebob was assertive. Spongebob said he liked assertiveness since he got an ice cream from that. I respect those priorities, but that eel licked the ice cream and you don't know where it's been. Later, Spongebob was using a metal detector when another guy asked if he could borrow Spongebob's. Plankton told Spongebob to be aggressive, but everything that Plankton told Spongebob to say to the guy, Spongebob didn't do correctly due to his kind nature, and Plankton eventually decided to just leave. Spongebob tried to get Plankton to stay, but Plankton just kept saying how Spongebob will never get the assertiveness thing right. Spongebob convinced Plankton to give him one last chance, so Plankton told him to get rid of the beachgoers so Spongebob can have more room to get a tan. So Spongebob used a towel to kick sand up to shoo everybody away. Plankton was pleased his plan was working and saw Spongebob's tan. Man, I wish I could tan like that. Plankton then told Spongebob about the line at the hot dog stand and the kite flyers, and Spongebob got rid of them. Then Larry the Lobster told Spongebob to toss the ball back to them, but Spongebob just popped it and Larry and the others left. Wow, Spongebob did that without Plankton needing to tell him. Spongebob realized everybody had gone, and then Plankton revealed his plans for the Chum Bucket Mega Bucket. Spongebob realized what Plankton had done, and Plankton said only aggressive people conquer the world. Spongebob decided to be aggressively nice, and then he pulled a Rico from the Penguins of Madagascar and regurgitated the hot dogs he swallowed and put the kites back. 
He then butterfly kissed a kid's ice cream cone clean and turned himself into a surfboard when scooters broke. And Scooter loved the color. Why does that matter? Your last surfboard had color too. Everybody started to return to Goo Lagoon and trampled Plankton. SpongeBob apologized about the chum bucket, and Plankton left the beach because of all of SpongeBob's acts of kindness. SpongeBob then turned himself into a volleyball to replace the ball he popped, the players used him, and the episode ends. So that was Walking Small, and I say this is a pretty good episode. This is another instance of how awesome Plankton is. You can't really go wrong with Plankton in the earlier episodes. Of course, I feel Plankton's been the most consistently written character throughout the series, even during the show's low points, but he's still a great character in episodes like these. And since this is the first episode where Plankton has a plan that doesn't involve stealing the formula, I think it was still pretty neat to see. Even though it was going to fail, it's still nice to see him do a plan that's not related to the Krabby Patty secret formula from time to time. While Plankton's plan in this episode is really funny, I always felt like there were some signs that made things feel a bit too convenient. For example, a guy asks for two ice cream cones, and 10 seconds later, Plankton has two ice cream cones. The eel goes through Spongebob's body to get an ice cream, and Plankton tells Spongebob to go after the eel and get the ice cream back, even though Spongebob already had an ice cream. After the eel gets an ice cream, the ice cream vendor was all out. Because of those signs, I couldn't help but wonder if they were somehow involved with Plankton's plan here. Of course, Plankton never snickered to himself saying something like, Yes, the ice cream trick is working. Time for phase two. Which would then lead to him crying to win Spongebob over with a sympathy vote so Spongebob would eat an ice cream cone for Plankton. With the way all those events play out, it's unclear to me whether the random fish and the eel were a part of Plankton's plan to manipulate Spongebob, or if it just happened to work out. Aside from that, I don't have any other major complaints. There are a pretty good amount of funny moments to be found here. I love the beginning when Plankton's so small, nobody can hear him, and when the kid just drops Plankton's bulldozer into the sand. I really like Spongebob's Seinfeld-like stand-up routine and the lengths he goes to put everything right. I also really like when he acts assertive to everybody, especially when he pops the volleyball and then makes an elephant noise. When he laughs evilly and the dramatic music plays in the background, I always thought, Damn, Spongebob's a savage now. I also like how Spongebob and Plankton bounce off of each other here. Plankton telling Spongebob to do something and Spongebob doing it incorrectly is funny. Like when Plankton tells Spongebob to be assertive, and Spongebob acts insertive. But if I'm being completely honest, I don't think I have much more to say about this episode. I do like watching it, don't get me wrong, but even as a kid, I remember watching its sister episode, episode 36, Texas, much more often. Of course, that is because I had the Sponge Buddies and Nautical Nonsense VHS tapes as a kid, and watched them constantly. This episode was never on either of those tapes, and I think that's a major factor in why I liked watching Texas more. Even when I was just watching the Season 1 DVD, sometimes I would just skip around and watch any random episode, but I didn't always watch this episode. Of course, if I sat down to binge a random disc from a random season, I would watch it from beginning to end. But if I just felt like watching one or two random episodes, I would just pop in whatever disc contained that episode and skip around. But if that's the case, I sometimes just skip this episode when watching the DVD. I guess just the impact of Texas and how much I watched it on the VHS tape made that episode more memorable to me personally. But that doesn't make this episode bad, far from it. I still enjoyed watching it, but I just didn't watch it as often as Texas, and that kind of thing from your childhood will always stick with you. Obviously, I've stated too many times at this point that I love all the episodes equally, but when looking at them critically, I have to say things like that. But that won't change the fact that I love all the episodes from the main show. But don't take any of this as me saying I don't like this episode, because I love it. I love Spongebob and Plankton's dynamic in this episode, Spongebob's assertive actions and aggressively nice actions are really funny, and Plankton is just an all-around great character here. And sometimes, that's all that can be needed to make a great episode. Oh right, and Spongebob was stepping on the beach here. That makes it even better than I was saying it. Walking Small is a good episode. I may have thought that it's not as memorable as its sister episode, 
but it doesn't do anything offensive or bad either, so that's a plus. I don't have much more to say about it, but... Yeah, that's all I got. But it is still a nice episode. And since I have a moment left, I have this to say. I've been working on perfecting my talent of playing Super Mario Bros. on this small Game & Watch screen, but it is still a small screen, and I do need a different game to play on a bigger screen. Well, it is a different game, but it's still a small screen, so... Yeah, I got nothing.